Hey, hey. How we doing? Amen. So, invite and share. I am so stirred. Invite and share. Invite and share. Hey, hello. Invite and share. Hey, hello. Good afternoon. Hey, hey. Excited to meditate. Hello. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew 11, verse 29. Matthew 11, verse 29, we're meditating on meekness. I am like really stirred. I've just finished praying, but I, I just can't stop. I'm in this thing right now. Hello, you waiting on your word, amen. I got you. We're going to prophesy to you. Hallelujah, Rastandoro Purish Tandaramanda, Restandaram. Hello, we're meditating on meekness, you all. Yeah, it was so great. As you see, I'm, I still ain't left that place. You know what I mean? I really haven't. Rostandaramaso. So invite and share. Hello, hello, hello. Invite and share. He is holy, holy, holy. Thou art holy, who was and is and is to come. Renderama Rusta. I can't um, understand what was put on there, but I pray that it's blessed. Amen. Rasta Dole Boshtanda. I pray that the Lord blesses you. Whatever language that was, I just pray that uh, the Lord blesses you. Resto Toromoshtanda Ramanda Rustanda Ramosho. Matthew 11, verse 29, y'all. I'm ready to get it in. Okay, Sharon de Remanda. Hallelujah. We're about to meditate on meekness. Rastendo de Corinde de Pason de Randiana. I'm so excited. How do we share? I heard with the iPhone, it's from left to right. I'm biting off of what uh, I hear Apostle Eckhart say on his scopes. <laughs> and my brother Anthony, they say left and right. Hallelujah. Wow. Oh, yeah, definitely going to pray. Pray for that marriage. Um, it's funny you saying that. I was just um, looking at something about the Jezebel spirit and, and the effect of it on marriages. Um, well, well, that's a question we're going to ask Jesus. If we yield to Jesus, that's, that's, you know, Jesus. Let's start right there. That's what we're focused on right now on this scope. We are going to meditate on the word of God. Matthew 11, verse 29. We're coming from the concept of Joshua 1, verse 8. We're just starting, Rushi. We're coming from the concept of Joshua 1, verse 8. That says, um, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. So when we meditate on the word, we make our way prosperous, and we have good success. But let me give you another aspect of it. We want to receive the engrafted word. Hallelujah. So on these scopes, we receive the engrafted word. We allow the word to be written on the table of our heart. And so that word meditate is a word Hagah, which means to imagine, it means to ponder, it means to mutter, and it means to study. And so on this scope, we are going to ponder as we mutter, and we're going to use our imagination as well. We're going to really go there. I want to read an, um, an excerpt from the book I told you about yesterday called a discourse of meekness and quietness in the spirit i want to read this to you all right now this is really going to bless you and then we're going to start to meditate it says huh there is meekness towards god and it is the quiet submission of the soul to his whole will i want to say that again there is meekness towards god and it is the easy and quiet submission of the soul to his whole will. All right. So that's the question that you can ask yourself. Are you easily or quietly submitting your soul to his whole will? And then here's another part of it. It says it is the silent 
submission of the soul to the word of God. We're going to say loud right there. It is the silent submission of the soul to the word of God. Have you submitted your soul to the word of God? Mm. And I'm going to read one more sentence. Let me tell you what meekness does. Meekness breaks up the fallow ground, makes us fit to receive the seed. It captivates the high thoughts and it lays the soul like white paper under God's pen. Huh. I'm going to read that again. Meekness breaks up the fallow ground, makes it fit to receive the seed. Okay. Captivates the high thoughts and lays the soul like white paper under God's pen. So this spirit of meekness allows you and I to become like paper under God's pen. So God can literally write out his desires upon the table of our heart. Hmm. Yes, and there's scripture for being underneath God's pen. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. Rostandoromoso. So are we ready to meditate on the word? Ah. Uh, yeah. Hallelujah. Isn't it amazing how God has led us to meekness with all this meditation? It's another level we're about to go in him. Amen. All right. Hmm. So Matthew 11, verse 29, you all. Okay. And that scripture says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Again, Matthew 11, verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls another word for meek is submissive humble and submissive so it's something for us to ponder as we meditate today are we submissive are we submissive Let's begin to meditate on this right now. We're going to start right now from the I am meek and lowly in heart. Okay. Let's begin to start. Let's begin to speak that right now. We're speaking to our soul. We're telling our whole being. I am meek and lowly in heart. I am meek. I'll tell you the book as soon as we get through uh, meditating. I am meek and lowly in heart I am meek and lowly in heart I am meek and lowly in heart hmm. I am meek I am submissive I am meek I am submissive. I am meek. I am submissive. Come on, you're talking to the author. You're talking to the Lord. You're letting him know hmm, we are submissive to him. I am meek. And I am submissive to you. I am meek and submissive to you. I am submissive to you. Mm. I am meek and submissive to you. Every time we're saying this, something is being broken. Okay? The sword of the Lord is cutting up the hardness that is in our heart that does not want to yield to the will of God. And it says in this scripture, we will find rest in our soul. Uh, we submit to him. Come on.
more. I am meek and lowly in heart. Yeah. I am meek and humble in my heart. Mm. I am meek and lowly in my heart. Hmm. I am meek and lowly in heart. Hmm. Lord, I love your meekness. Let's begin to talk to him with this scripture now. Because he's the one that says, I am meek and lowly. Lord, I love your meekness. Help me to be meek like you. Let's say that confession. Lord, I love your meekness. Help me to be meek like you. Lord, I love your meekness. Help me to be meek like you help me to be meek like you help me to be meek like you I am meek I am lowly in heart mm. just imagine your heart right now just totally surrendering and totally submitting every root to your heart being removed totally resting by itself in God's hand letting it be molded, shaped and formed in whatever way he wants it to be imagine all of your desires right now being removed from your heart and saying my heart is a blank canvas in your hand mm. I am meek I am submissive to your will I am meek I am submissive to your will I am meek I am submissive to your will ah. scripture just really hit me to say you all hmm. we're gonna come back to Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29 let's go to Isaiah 64 verse 8 because this is the essence of meekness right here okay and we're gonna come right back go to Isaiah 64 verse 8 Isaiah chapter 64 verse 8 it says but now O Lord Thou art our father, we are the clay, and thou art potter, and we all are the work of thy hand. Mm. We're going to meditate on, we are the work of your hand. <laughs> mm. Think about that, the clay the clay if the father is the potter we have to allow the potter to shape us we have to allow the potter to shape us if the clay resists the potter the potter can't design the clay in the way that he desires the clay has to be totally submissive to the hand of the potter or else it will it will be a messed up creation. Ah. Wow. Isaiah 64 verse 8. We don't want to be a messed up creation. Mm. Hallelujah. In order for the potter to be effective, the clay has to be moldable. Meek. So we're going to say this confession now from Isaiah 64, verse 8. We're going to say the word verbatim. We're going to say, we are the work of your hand. Okay, we're meditating. We're letting that word sit on our heart. Let's begin to tell them that 
we are the work of your hand. Mm, make it personal. We are the work of your hand. Hmm. I am the work of your hand. Ha, come on. Yeah, I am the work of your hand. It's very important that we stay right here. Let's, let's stay together, okay? And I want us to say these words because it's the word. And there's the power in that. I want, I want the nutrients and the wisdoms and the light to come on the inside of us right now. I am the work of your hand. I am the work of your hand. Hmm. I submit to you because I am the work of your hand. We're on Isaiah 64, verse 8 now. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 8. I submit to you because I am the work of your hand. Mm. Now let's begin to insert certain things that are the work of his hand. My day is the work of your hand. Come on, y'all. We about to, come on. We about to put it all in God's hands right now. Come on. My day from this moment forward is the work of your hand. Whatever happens in this day, Lord, <laughs> it's all your responsibility because I am totally submitted to you. Mm. Lord, my day is the work of your hand. Come on. We're going to say the different things that are the work of his hands. Submit it. What do you want to submit to God right now? Submit it. My life is the work of your hands. Maybe some of us, we just need to be re-encouraged. All right? We need to be reminded that these things are the work of his hand. Release it up here. My future is the work of your hand. Woof. My ministry is the work of your hand. <laughs> My thoughts are the work of your hand. Every relationship I have is the work of your hand. Mm. My job is the work of your hand. Ah. My inheritance is the work of your hand. My hope is the work of your hand. Mm. Our children are the work of your hand. My dreams are the work of your hand. That's why this is an excellent springboard for marriages. Maybe there's an area of your marriage that hasn't been submitted to them. Just submit your marriage. Let them know my marriage is the work of your hand. Mm. My family is the work of your hand. Ah. Father, let's start off and say, Father, this is part of the scripture. Father, my life is the work of your hand. Oh, I like that, Rushi. Let me say that for me. Father, my future marriage is the work of your hand. Oof. Father, the timing of my future marriage is the work of your hand. Hallelujah. Father, the relationship leading to the marriage is the work of your hand. Mm, come on. Father, my thoughts are the work of your hand. Mm, come on. Yeah. Mm. Father, my plans and my desires are the work of your hand. Mm. My hopes and dreams are the work of your hand. Mm. <laughs> my 
promotion and my deliverance is the work of your hand. Mm. The person I have picked to marry is the work of your hand. Mm. My activities are the work of your hand. My overcoming is the work of your hand. My faith is the work of your hand. Mm. See you all, what we're doing right now, not only are we yielding everything to him, if we haven't, some of us may be re-encouraging ourselves. But what this does is this removes the insecurity. It's a reminder to us. You know, some of these things we've already yielded to him. But by saying this, your soul comes into more agreement. It gets more rest of your soul and the insecurities begin to be dealt with. Hmm, the doubt. Ah, there's a power being released in this. Come on. Father, we are the work of your hand. Father, the assignment that my class is doing for the school expo is the work of your hand. Everything we come up with that is the work of your hand. Whatever you all are feeling personally for yourself, you can post it on the screen or you can just say it to yourself. It's, it's fine as long as you say it. And if you can't talk, then, then think that thing. Let it go around in your mind. Mm. Yeah, my love is the work of your hand. I like that. My deliverance is the work of your hand. I like that one too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Wow. My relationship with you is the work of your hand. Mm. I yield to your molding. Father, you are the potter. I yield to your molding. Let's begin to say that. Father, you are the potter. I yield to your molding. Father, you are the potter. I yield to your molding. Father, you are the potter. I yield to your molding. We're still in Isaiah 64, verse 8. Father, you are the potter. I yield to your molding. Mm. Give me another word for yield. Father, you are the potter. I submit to your molding. Father, you are the potter. I surrender to your molding. Yeah. Let's just not say this. Believe this. If you, if you don't feel this in your heart, allow yourself to, 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 to really become one with what it is you're saying. Take your mind. It's not a sin to imagine. Take your mind into the depths of this thing. to grit your teeth and say this strong for you to get the revelation come on whatever it is no pride I yield to your molding Jesus mm. I won't resist your molding mm. now let's begin to tell him Mold me, Lord. Mold me, Lord, into what you want. Mold me, Lord, into what you want my life to be. Mm. 
mold me, Lord, into what you want my life to be. Come on, this is 100% surrender. Mold me, Lord, into what you want my life to be. Hmm. This is going to challenge those areas that we don't want to give up. But remember, those areas that we don't want to give up, those areas are going to lead to death in our life. That's why they're dangerous. We want to be totally molded, totally yielded to the Lord. Mm. Mold me, Lord, in whatever way you want. Mold me, Lord, in whatever way you want. Do you all know that the Lord loves to hear that type of talk? Just tell him that right now. It's a power in that. Say, mold me, Lord, in whatever way you want. Come on, let's tell him that. In whatever way you want. <laughs> yeah, come on. Mold me, Lord, in whatever way you want. I want to see more people saying that right now. There's a power in that. Mold me, Lord, in whatever way you want. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, let's say that. It's a power in that. Mold me, Lord, in whatever way you want. Oof. Jesus. Mold me, Lord, in whatever way you want want <laughs> ah, yeah now we're going to say the same thing and we're going to go a step further we're going to say shape me Lord in whatever way you want come on shape me Lord in whatever way you want hallelujah Shape me, Lord, in whatever way you want. Hallelujah. Mm. If you can't put it on the screen, just say it to yourself. Shape me, Lord. Yeah. In whatever way you want. Shape me, Lord. Ah. In whatever way you want. Ah. Totally surrender every aspect of my life. Shape me, Lord. <laughs> you are the potter and I am the clay. Mm. If I don't have it, it's because, Lord, you don't want me to have it. And if I do have it, it's because you want me to have it, God. Hallelujah. Lord, we are yielded to you in this hour. Mm. We will not be insecure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm. Now let's go back to Matthew. 11 verse 29 and I'm going to wrap it up this scripture is so rich y'all I'm, I'm thinking we're going to be on this scripture again tonight Jesus man it says and ye shall find rest unto your souls mm. yeah we're we going we gonna to hit that this evening the rest unto your soul I write you all the name of the book. Um, if you ever want to learn about meekness, I'm telling you right now, this book is so cold and it's free. It's online. It's called A Discourse. Um, let me pull the book up. Pull it up. It's a book. It's called A Discourse on Meekness and Quietness of Spirit. I'm going to say it again. A discourse mm -hmm. on meekness and quietness of spirit. Okay? 
a discourse on meekness and quietness of spirit. If anybody needs to um, contact me. Oh, by the way, the book is by Matthew Henry. Yeah, it's by Matthew Henry. You can download the PDF. It's free online. I'm telling you, this book is like reading the Bible. This book was making me stop every couple, couple of pages. I read it a couple of years ago, but meekness is the power source. That's why Jesus said he is meek and lowly. So we can never really truly ascertain the fullness of the Lord without walking in meekness because it's the meek that he teaches his way. It's the meek that shall inherit the earth. Totally surrendered. Totally surrendered. So now we know, even if we face danger, we might look and say, oh man, it's danger. But then there's a confidence we have. Why? Because we're surrendered. So since we're so surrendered, it's like, you know what, Lord? My life is in your hands. You got this. Mm. Meekness, you all, surrendering to him. It's going to change the way your relationships are. It changes the way you talk to people. The way you deal with people is so powerful. Mm. Because we're submitting our souls to the word. The name of the book, again, is A Discourse on Meekness and quietness of spirit it's by matthew henry a discourse on meekness and quietness of spirit man i'm telling you it's <laughs> you'll see it's a pdf you can download it and read it for free or you can order the book if you just want to support yeah but it's free online by the way here's my thing again cosblack1 at gmail.com that's my, uh, my, my, my Gmail and Philip M. Watson. Um, it's the Facebook. Yeah, Bo Simone, come on. That's, that's where I'm at. Whatever way you want, Lord. We, we want to look like his design, for real, in every area of our life. Because then, that's when we achieve true happiness. Um, is that everything? I think that is everything. I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, women of God. Are you still on here, Cassandra? Cassandra, are you still here? Uh, the rest of you all, look, I'm going to um, I'm gonna do the prophetic this evening um, at 9 o'clock. So those of you all that hit up my email, um, I'll be sending the email back to you, um, telling you the time and everything. All right. Um, Cassandra, are you still there? Uh, Cassandra 30? If so, could I do you this? Could, could I do that um, this evening? You said at 8? Okay. All right, we'll do it at um, we'll do it at eight o'clock then. You said am I central or eastern? I'm central. I'm central. <laughs> right, right. Okay. All right, we'll do it at eight o'clock. Amen. You said you deliver most profile. <laughs> Ah, oh, that is funny. <laughs> y'all are funny. <laughs> God preacher. All right, y'all. <laughs> y'all are funny. Y'all are so funny. <laughs> you can catch the replay, by the way. Um, somebody has sent me a message, uh, Lola Kabaya. She sent me a message and she told me how to save these messages. I just put hashtag save. So now these messages are going to start saving longer than usual. And I want to tell you all something. I heard that uh, Prophetess Kathy Summers preached last night. Um, for those of you all that never heard, you know, the lady that was singing, she can also minister too, like she's powerful. And she ministered at our church last night. And guess what she did her entire message on? On humility. You know what I'm saying? So we in the vein. We are in the vein. I want you to be encouraged. We are in the vein. And the Lord desires for us to submit and to surrender. All right. This is the vein that we're in. To submit and to surrender. Okay. Um, so God bless you. I got to go. I really got to go. I got to do a couple of things right quick. Prophetic automobile revelations. Y'all are funny. <laughs> I love you all. <laughs> and I'll see you all later. 
<laughs> Holy Ghost. <laughs> oh gosh. Y'all are so funny. <laughs> Alright, y'all. See y'all later. Bye bye. <laughs> Holy Ghost. <laughs> All right, bye bye. <laughs> hey, car preacher. <laughs> oh man.